Strahtica, Tovarishi, and welcome to another new Let's Play. There's been uh, quite a few of them coming out as of late, but uh, this one we're going to be returning to Company of Heroes 2, because recently a new single player campaign came out for the game, and uh, actually I've been kind of excited for the campaign. It's called the Ardennes Assault, as you can see the advertisements uh, keep flashing on screen for the, for the campaign. But uh, it takes place during the Battle of the Bulge. And what honestly got me the most interested for this campaign was one screenshot I saw where there was a map with territories on it that you could take over. And uh, I've got a thing for maps, territories that you can take over. And this is the first time it's been in a Company of Heroes game. So I was pretty interested to see uh, how they implemented that into a campaign. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I guess we'll just kind of jump right into it. You know, the thing is, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, the Soviet campaign was not good. I mean, it, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't great, and it definitely wasn't as good as the original campaign. And, uh, it had this kind of, like, cornball element to it, because it's, like, trying really, uh, desperately not to make the Soviets seem like the good guys, even though you're playing as them, you have to kind of feel bad that you're playing as them. So I expect now that they've returned to this kind of World War II Americana, we're going to get lots of like cornball stereotypes and uh, whatnot. Though there was plenty of cornball stereotypes in the first one. Um, I just briefly played uh, one of the, the campaigns while waiting for dinner. But um, I'm actually going to pump it up to hard. Because I was playing the original campaigns for Company of Heroes on the high, highest difficulty. And I was actually having a ton of fun. It was really intense. And uh, it was really enjoyable. So hopefully um, this will give us a, a little bit more of a challenge. From the tiny foothold taken on the beaches of Normandy in June of 1944, Allied forces have established an ironclad front across a once occupied Europe. They drove deep into enemy territory, scoring victory after victory while freeing millions of people from the clutches of tyranny. But success has not come at an easy price. Our forces moved with shocking speed. Stretching supply lines thin while exhaustion set in amongst the troops. Now, with the onset of winter, Allied command has been forced to call a halt while supply and manpower situations are worked out. To alleviate pressure elsewhere, the rugged, forested Ardennes region in eastern Belgium offers a sleepy front, able to be held by new recruits and battle-weary troops as they find some rest before the assault on the German homeland begins. Okay, so we did get a little bit of that that right, cheesiness I was talking about. We're gonna be what the hell? Over duty from the airborne over checkpoint Fox. Now, seeing as how there ain't nothing there, we're going to build some stuff. There we go. That was weird. You know, I think about uh, what a terrible, terrible. Lucky for y'all, we got rear echelon squads available to pitch in. A tactical blunder, the Battle of the Bulge was uh, for Germany. They got it all figured out when it comes to building defenses, so they're going to help with the checkpoint. Uh, I kind of wonder if, if uh, instead of taking those forces, they wasted an attack. They kept, Germany kept their, uh, troops in kind of a reserve formation using it to strike out whenever the allies would uh, try and attack How, could they have lasted longer? Obviously they were going down, but I wonder if they played their cars differently how much longer they would have lasted so far this is pretty intense uh, preparing for sentry duty 
just every right, soldier's dream. Out, Shake a leg. Let's go. You know, when it comes to actual sort of uh, combat in World War II, okay. I read this, this fascinating, fascinating book, and I... Yeah, okay. Anyway, I encourage you to all check it out. It's called On Killing by, I believe it was uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Grossman. What the heck was that guy's uh, name? Oh, I can't remember the author's name. But, uh, you know, with that, the uh, author... Derby. Glad you could finally make it. Yeah, well, this war ain't no hurt end. Figured we had plenty of time to mosey on over. Well, shit. We wouldn't want you boys pulling a muscle hurrying on our account. I'm gonna get the men back to Rockerat for hot meals and showers. They could sure use it. Okay. But anyway, the author talks about the kind of the psychology of killing. Getting a bit crowded around here. We're gonna sit out the winter here. We need some more cover. Let's start by building a fighting position over there between the two trenches. And it's a it's a look at kind of how and why people kill. And in it talks about World War II, how only about twenty percent of riflemen actually ever fired their rifles, and and much less of that actually shot at enemies and. Uh, effectively and he goes even back to like the civil war and and the polionic wars where uh the prussians would do experiments uh where they would take Good. get a 50 cal in there to cover that area you know they, they take a group of 150 men or whatever a regiment was and they'd have a uh a target that was 100 meters long by six feet high which would be all right let's build some tank traps on the road next to the checkpoint here and, which would be the approximate size of an incoming enemy regiment. And they found that at happen, the effective firing range, sort of at 50 meters, that there was approximately uh, a ho much higher percent of kill ratios or killing shots than they would find in, in uh, real combat. So about they found out about like a, a certain length, I can't remember if it was uh, 50 yards or 20 yards, they would find out that the muskets they were using had an effective firing rate of uh, about 70%. Where in battle, people would actually fire much less, or uh, the effective fire rate was much less than 70%. Oh, crap. And uh, he attributes this to people just being un unwanting to kill another person. And that oftentimes when soldiers would fire, they would fire harmlessly over enemies' heads in order to, you know, contribute to the battle but not actually have to kill somebody. And in the book, he argues that uh, our innate distaste for killing is so powerful that it often. Uh, cannot be overcome even when our lives are in danger. Anyway, that then, well, later in the book, um, psychologists and, and, and generals found out that they can train soldiers to kill with a much more effective firing rate and a much more effective kill ratio kind of classical conditioning which ended up happening in Vietnam where firing rates rose from 20% in World War II to something like 90% with uh, modern training techniques anyway that I'm just rambling right now uh, long story oh I should, <laughs> long story short uh, oh my god did I shoot myself I don't think I did. Yeah, long story short, if you're looking for a fascinating read, I suggest uh, checking out On Killing.
positions is sustained. Chief Bar 5, contact report. Light infantry advancing from the northeast. Get ready. Roger. We're getting reports from all over the area. Germans are moving in from the east and to the north between here and Rockerat. What's the status on Jackson and his airborne team at Rockerat? No contact as of yet. We'll update you as we hear news. Anyway, I'm going to check my audio bounce. Oh. Okay, I'll wait till this is over. Okay, you're right back. All right, uh, we're back, and things sound good. Hold your positions. Keep those crossroads open. Reposition for cover. Anyway, uh, the author's name is Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, and. Uh, so yeah, that book will definitely change the way you think about uh, military combat, Call in some paratroopers. military history, Maybe we can and flank uh, these bastards. There's a drop zone behind those houses. Didn't I call paratroopers in? Okay. reporting. We're holding on the DZ. Enemy positions in those houses. Clear them out. Well, I think we're doing okay. to Krinkelt. No, the whole place is crawling with Germans. All right, we need to raise other sectors. Confirm what the hell's going on here. Vastano, our radio's gonna need a boost. Get over to the tower in the forest. We can tie into it. Warning ordered. This is it. Listen up. Get ready. All right, you're not new. moving out. Let's go. Um, okay, I'm trying on. to see here. Do I want to drop more paratroopers? Could I do that? Well, let's wait till we need them. Up, man. Come on. Get the out. I'm trying to see if I can just like call in random reinforcements like I could in the first game. Looks like we're going in. Ah, nuts. We got orders coming. Yeah, you Move can take that. Grab the heavy MG. Move it out. Let's go. Shake it out. Let's get moving. Warning orders. Get ready, guys. Fall in, troops. Here we go. We're on the move into enemy lines. Stay alert. We got orders. Enemy rifle! Enemy lines. Listen up! Listen up! Ah, oh, these poor bastards. They are just in the most completely exposed spot. German troops neutralized. Change of plans. Okay, go ahead. Get out of there. Move it. Order. Oh, crap.
Pathfinder's to build a beacon here. Oh, my Pathfinder is in here. Get, get outside. Looks like we're going in. We're not gonna get tangled up with Jerry. So it looks like you have a set amount of men that you can call in. Oh crap. Uh, like I said, the last Company of Heroes game I played was the first one. Um, and <laughs> I'm still... Monitors are up. Steady up man. Okay. Steady up. There we go. That's what I want to see. Nope, there goes my rifleman. We're trying to hold the line. I'm trying to flank these bastards. Oh shit! Ah, you bastards! Goddamn Krauts. Are these guys stormtroopers? Fulsham Jaegers. guys need to go back and get some reinforcements. Well, apparently, when I reinforce my gentlemen, they uh, do not actually lose their strength. Base uh, structure. Is gonna take, so I want a BAR weapons rack set up. Gather round. I smell orders. Unlock for BAR initiated. Uh, Moving out. Let's go. So what do we got? We got a Wolverine and a couple Driver stewards. Armory has up. Get your boys over there and grab some brownies. Oh, okay. Gather out. Let's see how it works. Yeah, baby. Take everything you can. All right, Baker, get ready to move out. We need to break through enemy forces to reach the airborne boys in Rockerat. Jackson, this is Edwards. Get your men to the edge of the village. We're going to try and form an evac corridor. Roger. Moving now. Well, these poor bastards. Just left them. Left them to die. Get Wow. 
Okay, so fast. What is this? Do they just add tankers? Because I really don't remember that from the first one. Or from the original Company Pyrrhus 2. Oh my god, I'm sending my guys out on a death march. I'm taking that tank. There we go. That's what I like to see. Oh my god, a panzer. You don't need to drive right directly into it. One Tanzer is just destroying my tank. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. What is this? Combined arms. Good work, men. Combined arms tactics can give both infantry and armor a boost. Moving out. Let's go. Can I give my men bazookas? Well, tank support's gone, boys. We'll be fine. Oh, wait, well, I can bring in. M3 loaded with our best. Headed to your sector. Get the bar to the middle of the spot. And that rowdy, bring up the rear. What are these guys? These poor bastards <laughs> just trying to hold the line and uh, didn't work out. another yeah. god I just feel like I'm doing so terribly at this probably because I am doing terribly don't worry I'll get it I always do but I still have a hundred percent strength Squad, waiting for orders. Knock 
get off and listen up moving out let's go all right this is it this is the time when we really push forward Look at this pile of corpses. Oh man. That is depressing. Alright. I don't really need these guys. They are really more distractions than anything else. All right. Awaiting deployment orders. Move, goddammit! Support. Stewards en route. Secure the ammo so we can get out of here. Driver, get him. Get moving. Hammer that goddamn line. All right, time to move forward. No more of this pussy footing about. Once your plane got off the road. that much damage. Fortunately, somehow I still have a hundred man strength. And that's the bazookas. And the... Okay, good. Well, we managed to make it. 